Hello, my name is Dr. Patricia Terry. I'd like to welcome all of you to Sanford University Commencement. Let's begin with Thanksgiving. So would you pray with me, please? Oh, Father, on this day of celebration, we humbly come before you, praising you for who you are. Creator and sustainer of all things, our strength and redeemer, our shield and defender, our help in times of trouble, our friend when there is no friend, the source of all love. God, we confess our fears and lack of faith when our world is turned upside down. We look to you to light the way and guide us through these uncertain times. You are our light, our salvation. You are our hope, our refuge. Today we bring these graduates before you as we pray for your blessings. Bless Sanford administration and staff who have worked so hard to support students, especially through the uncharted waters of the last few months. Thank you for Sanford faculty who have taught and mentored and poured themselves into the lives of their students. Thank you for relationships made and bonds formed that will serve those who were mentored well for a lifetime. Bless friends and family who celebrate with these graduates today. Thank you for parents and those like parents and other family members who have sacrificed to make this day possible. May they live in the hope that those blessings will be multiplied for your service in the vocational lives of their loved ones. Bless each graduate as they seek your purpose for their life. Thank you for all they have accomplished here and help them use their knowledge and skills to do the good works you have planned for them. In addition to this sense of accomplishment, give them empathy, compassion, patience, and love for others. As servant leaders, guide them daily as they grow into the men and women you would have them to be. We thank you, Father, that these students were called to Samford. We thank you for the privilege of knowing them, growing them, and sending them on their way. We thank you that they will always be ours. Now, as we celebrate the accomplishments of these graduates, may the God of peace equip you with every good thing to do his will, and may he accomplish in us what is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ. Amen. It is a privilege to welcome all who join us for Sanford University's commencement of the 179th anniversary session. This is not the ceremony we had planned, but it is surely the most distinctive graduation in our long history and one that we will always remember. As we celebrate the class of 2020, we also remember those who paved the way for us, and we give thanks for our heritage. Our history extends to 1841, when Howard College was chartered by the state of Alabama as an institution of higher education. Sanford was born in difficult times and has endured many trials. So often, the institution easily could have perished had it not been for its strong roots, lovingly nourished by loyal friends and students and faculty and alumni. We recognize that Sanford was here when we arrived, and it will endure long after we are all gone. Indeed, we sit in the shade of trees we did not plant, and we drink from wells that we did not dig. Now it is our turn, our obligation, our opportunity to plant trees. In these challenging days of 2020, we are encouraged by the strength of those who have preceded us. We will be faithful stewards and we will endure. We cherish the university's rich history and we embrace these graduates as Sanford's most precious legacy to the world and to eternity. To the parents and spouses and family and friends of these graduates who join us on behalf of the faculty and staff and trustees and surely our graduates, 
thank you for your support and dedication in making this achievement possible. Indeed, it could not have happened without you. In the hour ahead, we look forward to sharing the graduation speeches, moments of reflection and prayer, and most of all, we look forward to calling each and every graduate by name. I'm so pleased that we can share this special occasion together. May hope and gentleness of spirit pervade our thoughts during these moments. It is a time of celebration, a time of remembrance, a time of healing, a time of gratitude. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Dr. Westmoreland. Although the pandemic prevents us from gathering on campus to celebrate your graduation, the bonds between us are strong enough to span the distance and the time to unite us. Those bonds are secured by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of people who built Cumberland into what it is, the Spirit of Cumberland lawyers who have accomplished so much through the years. And it's the spirit of the contributions that you, the class of 2020, will make to the bar and to society. In that vein, announcing the recipient of the Daniel Austin Brewer Professionalism Award has become a special part of the Cumberland School of Law commencement ceremony. The Brewer Award is special for two reasons. First, it is special because it reminds us of Governor Albert Brewer, who was a friend, professor, mentor, and even idol to many of us and to people across Alabama. Governor Brewer served this state of Alabama in numerous offices and who, by all accounts, was one of Alabama's greatest statesmen. He also served Samford and Cumberland as distinguished professor of law and government for more than two decades. Announcing the recipient of the Brewer Award is also special for another reason. It's special because the award recognizes values that are at the heart of what Cumberland is all about. This is not an award for highest academic achievement or for being the greatest advocate. Rather, fitting for an award established by Governor Brewer and bearing the Brewer name, this award is granted to a graduating student who best exemplifies the high standards of ethics and professionalism expected of lawyers. Selecting the recipient of the Brewer Award was especially difficult this year. Students, faculty, and staff nominated multiple people, and all of the nominees are eminently deserving. An award, though, is not award, an award if we give it to everyone. This year's recipient of the Brewer Professionalism Award is Brooke Messina. Brooke received multiple nominations. They praised her professionalism, her compassionate interaction with others, her cheerful good humor, and her energetic leadership in countless organizations on campus. Brooks served as managing editor of the Cumberland Law Review and as a Cumberland admissions ambassador. She served in leadership positions in the Christian Legal Society and was a member of the Trial Advocacy Board, the Judge Edwin Horton Inn of Court, and other organizations. As one of Brooks' nominations wrote, the woman is everywhere and she always shows up in the best possible way full of energy and good humor, kindness and compassion. So congratulations to Brooke and thank you for your contributions to Cumberland. Now commencement is also a customary time to recognize and honor retiring faculty. Two members of the Cumberland faculty are retiring this year who have been pillars of the law school for decades. They are professors Tom Stone, and Deborah Young. Tom Stone joined the Cumberland faculty in 1978, holding a JD degree from Emory University, a Master of Laws degree from the University of Illinois, 
and a Ph.D. in economics from the University of Tennessee. He taught the foundational subjects of contracts and business organizations to generations of Cumberland lawyers. In addition to teaching the legal doctrine of those and other subjects, Professor Stone drilled into his students an understanding of and appreciation for the workings of a market economy. Tom loved talking to students. You could find him daily in the hallway after class chatting with students, explaining concepts, and always extolling the virtues of capitalism. Professor Deborah Young joined the Cumberland faculty in 1997. Before coming to Cumberland, she served on the faculty of Emory University Law School and served as an assistant United States attorney for the District of Columbia. Professor Young directed Cumberland's renowned trial advocacy program for more than 20 years, teaching evidence and trial advocacy and creating our advanced trial advocacy course. She served as a beloved cheerleader, mentor, counselor, and champion for a generation of young women lawyers. At this time, though, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Dean and Professor Brad Bishop. Dean Bishop needs no introduction to the class of 2020, or for that matter, anyone who has any connection to Cumberland School of Law in the past 50 years. His ties to Samford and Cumberland are deep. He is a graduate of Howard College, now Samford University, where he was on the debate team and played varsity football and baseball. After, entering, after earning his master's degree, he returned to Samford to teach in the undergraduate school and coach the debate team leading his team to a national championship. While continuing to teach and coach, he enrolled in and graduated from Cumberland School of Law. Dean Bishop subsequently joined the Cumberland faculty in 1971. For the next 50 years and counting, he has been Cumberland student's favorite professor. He has won every teaching award Sanford has, some of them multiple times. He served the law school in nearly every capacity, including associate dean and dean. He has published books on the law of shoplifting, DUI, and municipal courts. He has served as municipal judge for multiple cities and continues to serve as municipal judge for Hoover, Alabama. He also served as the chief advisor, chief legal advisor to the governor of Alabama in the 1990s. We are indeed fortunate to have had Dean Bishop shaping and building and guiding this institution. And we are especially fortunate to have him deliver Cumberland's 2020 commencement address. Dean Brad Bishop. First of all, let me thank you. I'm deeply honored that you have selected me to be your commencement speaker. Uh, it's a very special time for you. It's a special time for me. It's a unique time in the sense that in the history of the Cumberland School of Law, you have to be the most unique graduating class we have ever had. To be abruptly kicked out of the school, so to speak, uh, on campus, to go to internet education, it was certainly a, an interesting thing for both you and for the faculty, but we made it. I think I'm going to quote several important people today, I guess, to typify what I think about your class and this faculty during these trying times. The best quote I can think of is from the football coach, Bear Bryant, who said, when the tough going gets tough, the tough get going. And I think that's what has happened in your situation. When the going got tough, you got going. And it's made for a successful ending to the year. You know, as a graduation speaker, I can tell you that I have at Cumberland, this is my 50th graduation ceremony. So I've heard 
49 graduating speakers on commencements just for the Cumberland School of Law. Prior to that, I was on the faculty of Sanford University for four years, and I heard graduation speeches as an undergraduate faculty member there. Before that, I was on the faculty at Mississippi State University for four years, and I heard graduation speakers there. So in reality, I've heard 57 graduation speeches at commencement ceremonies in my lifetime. And if you ask me to quote virtually anything from any of those speeches, I'd be hard put to do it. I think the reality is when you're at a graduation ceremony waiting to get your diploma, then uh, you're ready to get that diploma and move on to celebrate with your family and friends. So while it's a unique situation, then I do remember this. Most of the graduation speakers through the years at Cumberland have talked to you about uh, how to be well prepared for the, the practice of law. And most of them have to do with uh, recommendations as you embark on your legal profession. Now, that's not my goal here today. My goal here today, more importantly, I think, for you, is to talk about how to have a happy life as you live the rest of your life. And I'm going to base my recommendations basically on speakers that I have heard, that I have read, and that have made a very important impact on me. Now, the first thing that I would say that is the most important is this, that I call it the three Fs for total success. And that would be family, faith, and friends. I cannot stress enough about during your lifetime how much your faith, your family, and friends will mean to your total success and happiness. So I would begin by saying just never forget that. When you need support, when things get really bad, those are your support systems, family, faith, and friends. Now, what I'm going to do now is tell you that there are three things that during my lifetime have made an impact on me that I have read. And I'm going to use the words of those people that I'm quoting directly. The first thing that I would talk about is from a journalist and author called uh, Lloyd Scherer. He wrote a book, and the book was called A Guide to a Happy Life. And in that, he made some recommendations to enable us to live a happy life. And I highly recommend that you keep these things in mind as you move forward. One, no one will ever get out of this world alive. Resolve, therefore, to maintain a reasonable sense of values. Take care of yourself. Good health is everyone's major source of wealth. Without it, happiness is almost impossible. Resolve to be cheerful and helpful. People will repay you in kind. Resolve more and talk less. No one ever learns anything while talking. Resolve to be tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic with the striving, and tolerant of the weak and wrong. Sometime in your life, you will have been every one of these. Do not equate money with success. 
There are many successful money makers who are miserable failures as human beings. What counts most about success is how a person achieves it. The next person I would quote is actually the 30th president of the United States, Calvin Coolidge. Many of you who have come to my law office at Cumberland on various occasions will probably have noticed that I have this prominently posted on the bulletin board right outside my door. It's there because I truly believe the words that he has spoken. And here it is. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. So whatever your goals are in life, as you continue in the legal profession, just remember the words of Calvin Coolidge, press on. Perhaps the most important thing that I have discovered in my lifetime that has motivated me to try my best to maintain a sense of happiness during my lifetime is a poem called The Station, written by Robert Hastings. I read this poem many times in my lifetime. In fact, it's a poem that I always ended my bar review course lectures for students getting ready to take the bar exam. And I'm going to read it to you in closing the message that I think is one of the most important things you can do to enjoy the rest of your life. The poem is called The Station. It's about the journey. Tucked away in our subconscious is a wonderful vision. We see ourselves on a long trip that spans the continent. We're traveling by train. Out the windows, we drink in passing scenes. But uppermost in our minds is a final destination. On a certain day, at a certain hour, we will pull into the station. Bands will be played. Flags will be waving. Once we get there, so many wonderful dreams will come true and the pieces of our lives will fit together magically like a completed jigsaw puzzle. In the meantime, how restlessly we pace the aisles, downing the minutes for loitering, waiting, waiting, waiting for the station. We think to ourselves, once we reach the station, that will be it. When I am 18, when I buy that new Mercedes, when I put my last kid through college, when I pay off the mortgage, when I get a promotion, when I reach the age of retirement, I shall live happily ever after. Sooner or later, we must realize there is no station, no one place to arrive at once and for all. The true joy of life is the trip. The station is only a dream. It outdistances us constantly. Relish the moment 
is a good motto. It isn't the burdens of today that drive men wild. It is the regrets over yesterday and the fear of tomorrow. Regret and fear are twin thieves that rob us of today. So, stop pacing the aisle and counting the miles. Instead, climb more mountains, eat more ice cream, go barefoot more often, swim more rivers, watch more sunsets, laugh more, cry less. Life must be lived as we go along. The station will come soon enough. I wish true happiness for every one of you. So enjoy your life as you move forward and have a great future. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment for which you have been waiting. By the authority vested in me, by the Board of Trustees, in harmony with the recommendations of the faculty, in accordance with the laws of the state of Alabama, I hereby confer upon you the appropriate degree, together with our prayers, that you will use what you gained here in the service of God and of humankind, wherever you may go in this needy world. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Westmoreland, for the Cumberland School of Law, the Master of Science. Kendra S. Ayers, also awarded the Doctor of Pharmacy degree from McWhorter School of Pharmacy. Rashandra Lawanta Crawford, also awarded the, the Doctor of Pharmacy degree from McWhorter School of Pharmacy. Mallory June Mullins, also awarded the Doctor of Pharmacy degree from McWhorter School of Pharmacy. For the Master of Comparative Law, Eduardo Macias Altamani, Renato Bonifacio Demilo Diaz, Leonardo Tachetto Paperio, Paolo Cesar Santos. For the Juris Doctor, Lauren C. Iyer. Molly Wallace Amick, cum laude, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Emily Ann Angel. David H. Anthony. Elizabeth Kirkland Back. Sarah Ann Marie Baldwin, summa cum laude. Christopher T. Ballantyne. Dylan George Barquette. Megan E. Bateman. Alec Jeffrey Bauman. Lana Elizabeth Bell. Ivy E. Best. Hattie Bernice Blackburn. Robert Terrell Blakesley. Courtney Faith Bobo, cum laude. Oscar Cobb Bostick, Jr. Teresa Marie Bray. Colin R. Brennan, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Mason Edward Bunn. William V. Burkett, magna cum laude. Catherine E. Buttry. Nicholas J. Calvin, also awarded the Master of Public Health degree 
from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Giselle A. Carter. Caitlin Patrice Choman. Nolan Scott Clark, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from the Brock School of Business. Maggie Catherine Cohen, cum laude. Catherine Spalding Collins, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Isabella Maria Colombo. Sean P. Connor, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Michael R. Cook. William David Cooper. Taylor Morgan Dant. Anna Elizabeth Dennis. Chandler Blythe Duncan, also awarded the Ma Master of Public Health degree from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Olivia B. Durden. Kevin B. Durick. Andrew Edge. Danielle Esposito, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Sarah Jessica Farmer. Hugh Samuel Gaynor Jr., cum laude. Stacy Lawrence Gant. Karami Autumn Garrett. Daniel Thomas Golick. Marshall D. Gee Jr. Jackson Graham Gilmore, cum laude, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. David Lyon Glenn. Zachary Christopher Gloff. Christopher Jordan Godwin. Richard Blaine Goodwin, summa cum laude. Catherine Grafton. Joseph Ellis Graham II. Grace N. Greco. Jason Greenbald. Megan Elizabeth Greskovich, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Tylan Faniel Jacole Griffin, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Josh Hanbury. Kristen L. Hardy. Evan Michael Hargett. Malcolm Allen Head IV. Alexandria Celeste Hurd, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Nolan Thomas Herslebs, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Savannah K. Holliday. Jacob William Holliday. Charles Francis Horton III. Elizabeth A. Hosmer. Jessica Ann Hunter. Megan Elizabeth Ingram. Nathan Nicholas Jackson, cum laude. William C. Johnson. 
Nicole Ramos Jones, Justin T. Keaton, Gavin Floyd King, Taylor Nicole King, Mallory Claire Coger, magna cum laude, Alex M. Leganke, also awarded the Master of Public Administration degree from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Wilson M. Landers. Nikki Laley Lawson. Brandon Michael Lawson. Jordan Richard Leonard. John Campbell Lentine. Whitney Page Lott, cum laude. Jackson Wesley Manuel. Thomas Gregory Marshall. Gordon Tucker Martin, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Kimberly B. Massey. Morgan K. McFall. Robert B. McNeil. Brooke Layton Messina, cum laude. Sarah M. Morris. Daniel Christopher Moss, magna cum laude also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Christopher Randall Owens. Elijah T. Pack. Kyle M. Parrish. Zachariah T. Permenter. Lindsay A. Phillips, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Elizabeth Stapleton Pilcher, magna cum laude. Brock Hayes Penson, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Jonathan Hunter Plott, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Michael Clifford Portner, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Jack H. Poucher, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Brooke Kiera Pruitt. Elizabeth Irene Rainwater. Mary C. Rabin. Jackson Montgomery Reagan, magna cum laude, also awarded the Master of Accountancy degree from Brock School of Business. Hayden Redman. M. Kyle Richardson. Hogan Crawford Ricks, Sarah Deline Rogan, William Jacob Sauls, Dylan P. Shillibro, Brendan L. Smith, Stephanie A. Smith, cum laude, Nathaniel B. Stotzer, cum laude. Jean Elizabeth Talbot, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Michael Evans Thompson. Thomas M. Thornycroft. Sarah Elizabeth Tyndall. Alexander Jordan Townsley, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree 
from Brock School of Business. Morgan M. Turner. Elena Victoria Upman. Nicholas R. Utley. Kaylee Allison Van Houten. Ruby E. Villalobos. Harrison Carter Wagner. Kenneth Jake Walters. Garrett Lee White. Benjamin Kyle Witt, cum laude, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Lauren Ann Wiggins, cum laude. Lachey Shateria Williams. John Wesley Williamson, cum laude, also awarded the Master of Business Administration degree from Brock School of Business. Brittany A. Wilson. Taylor Amanda Wilters. Jillian M. Zarkor. Right, on behalf of the class of 2020, I would like to thank the entire administration at Sanford University and Cumberland School of Law for making this ceremony possible. Thank you to Dean Strickland as well for his leadership during these challenging times and our past three years at Cumberland. Also, I'd like to give a special thank you to the Director of Academic Support Programs, Professor Lynn Hogwood. For those of us who have just completed the bar exam, it is evident there's no one who does more for her students at Cumberland than Professor Hogwood. Her tireless and continued efforts do not go unnoticed, and we truly appreciate them. I'd also like to give special recognition to Judge Brad Bishop for his special address to our class this year, albeit under different circumstances. Judge is getting ready to celebrate 50 years at Cumberland and has influenced countless generations of future lawyers. Over the years, graduates have taken his lessons to heart. And who doesn't remember as a first year uh, law student in section three, his comment, and I quote, C students have been some of the best lawyers that I have ever taught. Well, this was truly the confidence boost that some of us needed because in nearly 50 years of teaching, I'm not sure that Judge has ever given one single student more C's in his classes. And this year, thanks to the generosity of our class, we were able to give over $3,000 toward the Bishop Society Fund, which will go toward funding scholarships at Cumberland uh, throughout many years. On a more serious note, I'm honored to speak with you today. Um, this is different circumstances than any of us could have ever imagined. But, but this year and, and being here is about celebrating you and your accomplishments as a class of 2020. While we did not end our third year as we all would have liked, the determination and resolve of this class to finish the year strong will always be remembered. From winning competitions all across the country to hosting legendary law weeks for all of the student body to enjoy, allow me to congratulate the class of 2020 for tremendous flexibility and perseverance. This class graduated and made preparations for the bar exam in one of the most turbulent times in generations. Three years ago, a special group of law students ascended to the campus of Cumberland right here in Birmingham, Alabama. We all came together from different states, backgrounds, and perspectives, but we came together as a group. From former Army Rangers to aspiring criminal defense attorneys who wanted to take part in our justice system firsthand. Many of us were nervous and didn't know what to expect in our first years of law school. For some of us, we weren't even sure if we had made the right choice in coming to Cumberland. But I can assure you, three years later, it is clear that Cumberland was the right choice for all of us, members of the class of 2020. And one of the things that comes to mind when thinking about our time together these past three years is the relationships that are built between classmates. There's something truly unique about the people and the culture at Cumberland, something that is tangibly different from other law schools across the country. Everyone from the entire staff, administration, and students want the best for each other and to see each other succeed. It has been a true joy to watch the relationships that have formed between all of us in the class of 2020. We have studied and reviewed the bar together every Thursday. Lord knows there's never been a class to get more complaints than the library together, or some of us at least. Whether you were in section one, two, or three, the memories and bonds formed with your classmates will stick with you for a lifetime. 
The legal profession is truly all about relationships, and that is what Cumberland has told us well. This isn't the end for our class. Heck, this is only the beginning. From graduating one of the most successful businessmen in the state of Alabama's history to producing excellent trial lawyers each and every year, I can't wait to see everyone's potential to succeed. Uh, the class of 2020 will enter the legal profession at a time when your lawyer abilities are needed more than ever. You enter with the ability to make decisions and help society make decisions based on evidence to protect the rule of law and to do what lawyers do best, solve problems. Congratulations to those who have finished the bar exam this past week, and good luck to all of those who are preparing for their exam. While I know that it, it is a very challenging time for everyone, I have no doubt that our class will stand out for their resilience and determination. This generation of Cumberland lawyers will undoubtedly be one of the best in our 173 year history, and I look forward to watching what will be some remarkable careers take place. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve as your class president this year, and it has truly been a privilege to get to know so many of you over the past three years. And I cannot wait to see the impact each of you make moving forward. On behalf of all of us, I would like to thank those who have helped us on this journey. On behalf of the class of 2020, I would like to thank our families, our friends and loved ones who supported us each step of the way, because none of this would have been possible without their help. And finally, to the Cumberland School of Law, thank you for the opportunities you afforded the class of 2020 and our time here as students. Now let us go forth and make you proud. As we move to the conclusion of this program, and before I present the traditional commencement awards, allow me to recognize seven graduates who have prepared for military service through our Air Force ROTC detachment. United States Air Force Second Lieutenants, Patrick C. Cothran, Abigail Ferrier, Hampton Taylor Floyd, Andrew Connor Revel, Katie Joy Revel, Matthew David Russell Sauer, and Rachel Christine Thompson. We applaud your commitment to our nation, and we thank you for your service. In honor of John C. Pittman, a member of the class of 1944 and a Sanford trustee for more than 50 years, the Board of Trustees established the John C. Pittman Spirit Award to recognize a graduating student who consistently exhibits exceptional Christian character in community life. I am pleased to announce the 2020 Pittman Award goes to Joyner Busque from the School of Public Health. The Velma Wright Irons Award to the student with the second highest cumulative grade point average is presented this year to Anna Ruth Waters of the School of Health Professions. Congratulations, Anna Ruth. The President's Cup for the class of 2020, awarded to the graduate with the highest grade point average across all university colleges and schools, goes to a Howard College of Arts and Sciences graduate, earning a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in psychology from Madison, Alabama, Teresa Marie Angioski. Congratulations. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. My thanks to all concerned for their hard work in coordinating this video ceremony for us today. I am especially grateful to our faculty and staff who responded to the challenges of virtual classrooms with such determined creativity this year. The end of this academic year was not at all what we imagined, but we can all be proud of the efforts of all of our people including our students. So okay, class of 2020, you are now well on your way to the challenges and opportunities of an abundant life. We hope your journey will lead you back to see us soon and often. We will miss you. We already miss you. We have missed you since last March. May these newfound experiences be all that you dared to dream 
and may God provide blessings and opportunities beyond your expectations. May you be safe, may you be well, may you be challenged, may you be inspired, and may you remember that on a hillside in Alabama, there are people who will recall your name years from now with proud memory. That was my student. We've given you our best now into a broken, beautiful world, a world of strife and hope and promise in need of healing. Use what you gained here and multiply it 100-fold. May God bless each step, each day. Thank you. It is now my privilege as Sanford's provost to not only congratulate you on becoming our newest Sanford alumni, but to also offer our closing benediction that we hope will serve as a special blessing for each of you and your families. Please join me now as we seek the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for these graduates. We thank you for everything that each of them has been able to accomplish during their time at Samford University. We know this graduating class is an exceptional class, Lord. We're thankful for their perseverance. We're thankful for the way they've overcome extraordinary challenges to complete their studies this year and to do so with exemplary grace. We're thankful for their kind cooperation with Sanford's administration, faculty, staff, and their fellow students during these trying times. This year's challenges make the members of our administration, faculty, staff, and supporters even more grateful, Lord, to be able to pursue our calling at Sanford, to nurture these students, as our mission statement says, and their development of intellect, creativity, faith, and personhood. We have sought through their academic instruction and Christian influence to prepare them to fulfill your call on their lives. We believe we have done so. We thank you for that privilege. As we send these graduates out to fulfill your specific will for each of them, we ask that you show favor on them. We also seek your favor on their families. We pray that you will place each of them in positions where they will excel not only vocationally, but in service to you, their communities, and the world. In these uncertain times, we ask that you grant them the certainty of your personal provision, as promised over and over again in Scripture. We commit ourselves to pray for them, individually and corporately. And so, we now offer the same blessing from the closing verses of Hebrews chapter 13 that has encouraged generation upon generation seeking to follow your will for their lives. Father, I pray that this biblical benediction will be our consistent prayer for this exceptional class. Now, may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom we glory forever and ever. Amen. Congratulations, class of 2020.